Okay, we are asked to uh, graph a function, uh, label its vertex, axis of symmetry, and x intercept, and then identify the domain and the range. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so we can see it better. Perfect. So this is the function. It is in factored form or intercept form, uh, which is basically this guy, right? Y is equal to A times X minus P and X minus Q. Now those two numbers right there, the P value and the Q value, those are your X intercepts. So whatever numbers you see here, provided you pay attention to the fact that it's supposed to be subtraction, those are going to be your x-intercepts, and that's one of the things that we can do to help us graph. Um, to help us graph. So um, my p-value is actually a negative four, right? This is what's here. It's supposed to be subtraction, so it have to be minus minus. My q-value is a negative one, so that means my x-intercepts are at those two locations, at the coordinate negative four zero, and at negative one zero. So I'll be able to plot those points. Um, now to find the axis of symmetry, the axis of symmetry splits that. So let me go ahead and move up so we can actually kind of see maybe um, negative 4 right here and negative 1 right here. Now um, the axis of symmetry is going to go right in between them and it's going to go right down the middle. Um, it's fairly easy to tell here that it's going to be right about there. Maybe not so much when I'm covering it. Uh, it's three units wide, so one and a half, meaning you know, right about there where it's going right down the middle. Unfortunately, that's not a whole number. Um, and let's talk about how to calculate it. So if we don't have the picture right in front of us, we can do it. We want to average these two numbers. So to get the axis of symmetry, we're going to do x equals, and then we'll average these two numbers, the p and the q, 4 minus 1. And then we're going to divide that by 2. So let's see. We get negative 5 halves which is the same as negative 2.5. And that's exactly where I was here. X is equal to a negative 2.5. So I have an axis of symmetry there, and I'll go ahead and just draw that equation. And the axis of symmetry is X equals negative 2.5. I'll draw that in with a nice little dashed line. Okay. So there is my axis of symmetry. Um, and I can go ahead and label it, All right? That is, um, a lot of people are labeling it AOS. I sometimes will do this axis of symmetry, but it is the equation X equals negative 2.5. Vertical line going through 2.5 on X. Okay, so really all we need from here is where that vertex is. Um, and then I can just, you know, connect the vertex to those two points. Uh, so let's see, what is, how do I find the vertex? Well, I know it's on the axis of symmetry, and I know that x value is 2.5. So I can go back to my equation, and I can input f of negative uh, 2.5. So I'm going to input negative 2.5 into my function. Move that up here so we can see a little bit more of that work. So once I do that, oh, maybe we should be able to see both of them. I want to replace the x with negative uh, 2.5. So I'm kind of, I don't have a lot of space here, so I'm just going to kind of put it underneath it. So we're going to do plus 4, plus 1. And I'm replacing the x with negative 2.5. Oh, I did not set that up well for spacing. I'm going to write it better underneath it. plus 1, plus 4, and negative 2.5, negative 2.5. And then from here, I'll just use the calculator. I'll type that in. All right, so we're going to do negative 2.5 plus 4 times negative 2.5 uh, plus 1. And we can see that there. And we're going to get negative 2.25. And I know a lot of times people don't like the fact that we're getting decimals and fractions, but decimals and fractions do not necessarily mean wrong answers. So that is indeed correct. F of negative 2.5 is equal to negative 2.25. So that's the X and Y pair that is going to make the vertex, my vertex, negative 2.5, negative 2.25. 
graphing by hand sometimes it can get kind of difficult to get this exactly where it needs to be because we have you know negative one, negative two, negative two point two five. But that's okay. We're just gonna put it as accurate as we can. We're on the axis of symmetry down one, down two, and then a little bit more of a quarter from there. Our a value is one, so actually graphing this uh, using the a value not too bad. The issue is that we're not on like whole numbers. We're down to a quarter. So I would probably at this point just connect it. Um, like this. I know it's going up. Like this. I know it's going up. And that'll give me a pretty darn decent graph. Okay, so maybe we want to see kind of all of what's happening there. Original function, P and Q, x-intercepts, use them to find the axis of symmetry, plug that axis of symmetry in to get the corresponding y value, which is the vertex. Um, it did ask for the domain and range, uh, so I'll put that down here. Domain and range. Um, our domain, uh, like for most of these parabolas, because it's going forever left and right, is that x is all real numbers. And then our range um, is not all real numbers. It's got to be the low point of the y value here and then everything above it. So this coordinate, right, is negative 2.5, 2.25. So it's everything above that y value. y is all real numbers, but y is greater than or equal to negative 2.25. And that's everything they asked for. The vertex, the axis of symmetry, the x-intercepts. Um, it did ask to label this stuff, so maybe I can label this as an x-intercept. This is also an x-intercept. Um, it is the x-intercept, negative 4, 0. This is the x-intercept, negative 1, 0. We got the vertex labeled. We got the axis of symmetry labeled. I'll go ahead and just put vertex on this. All right, I hope that's helpful. Message me anytime with questions.